Hey, good morning. It is. Let's try this again. Good morning. And it is Wednesday. Hope that you had a great day yesterday. Uh, and uh, hope you're having a, a good start to your day today. It was a little wet outside. Got to, uh, just a little bit of rain last night. So I was out washing my car. And uh, you know what? The, the Lord was helping me, I guess. And he provided the rain. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but the car did get a bit of a bath in the rain, so we'll take that, I guess. Uh, hope uh, hope you're you're having a great start to your day today. Look forward to what God has for us in the Psalms. Before we get there, I do want to say thank you for your prayers yesterday. Uh, it was an encouraging uh, a meeting uh, down in Mount Pleasant at the church there uh, with the different uh, pastors in, in the area, and just a blessing and encouragement. Uh, and it's it's awesome. It's always exciting to see. Uh, men of God that uh, that remain faithful, uh, men who who are fighting the fight, and those who have been in the fight for a while and continue. That's encouraging. So thank you for your prayers yesterday, and uh, I don't want to I don't want to rub it in too much, but man, Panda Express was amazing. Love it, and uh, uh, oh, it's so good. And I always look for excuses to go to Panda Express and. I get that sounds bad, I guess. The pastor's meeting is an excuse. No, it's just the, no, the Pan Express is the perk, I guess. So, uh, but thank you for your prayers. Uh, and uh, it was, it was very encouraging. And then also, don't forget, tonight is Wednesday, or today is Wednesday, and tonight we have services uh, at six o'clock. So keep that in mind. Got the rock for our young people. Uh, and then also uh, for our adults, we have our prayer meeting. And so I hope you'll be in church if you can make it. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a great night. I always I thoroughly enjoy uh, being together with the people of God, and and I hope that you do as well. And if, if I hope you can make it for the services, uh, they're gonna be uh, exciting tonight. All right, let's look into the Word of God here. Uh, we're in Psalm seventy eight, and looking down verse number twenty three, we're kind of right in the middle of it. Uh, we're not gonna finish it today. We're gonna. We're going to continue to walk through, uh, but uh, man, what a powerful psalm this is. What a convicting psalm uh, it has been as we've looked at the last couple of days. And I just have a greater appreciation for my relationship with the Lord uh, and for my salvation. Uh, and I don't want to ever get over my salvation. hope you don't either. But let's look at it. Verse number 23 as we dive right in. Verse 23 says, Though he had commanded the clouds from heaven, and opened the doors of heaven, and had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. Uh, he sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust, and uh, feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea, and he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat and were filled, for he gave them their own desire. Uh, and you know you know the story, the children of Israel, as they, uh, as they journeyed through the wilderness, God gave them manna uh, from heaven, uh, and God rained it down for them, and they gathered it in the mornings, and, uh, and God provided for their every need. He even gave them, uh, as we read in verse 27, he gave them uh, fowl to eat and 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 meat to eat, uh, and he provided for their every every needs. We we see in the New Testament where the Scripture tells us that in having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Uh, and God was meeting Israel's most basic needs, that which they needed in order to live. They needed food. We've seen how God provided water for them. God met their most basic needs. Uh, and don't, uh, I want to say, be content with what God has given to you. Sometimes we look at what other people have. And we think, man, I've got to have that. Look at that car. Look at that boat. Look at that house. Uh, look where they're going to dinner. Whatever it might be, uh, be content with where you're at. Be content with what God has, has for you. Uh, it does, doesn't mean that we can't strive to improve our situation, but don't do it just to to catch up with the Joneses, okay? Uh, be content with what God has for you and, and strive to improve, st strive to grow. Now, look with me, verse number 30 here. 
Israel, they're, they, they're give, God's meeting their most basic needs. Verse number 30. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this, they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Can you... I, I play through this story of Israel in my mind and, and we see how God provided for them and they still sinned against the Lord. I uh, think of, think of this. I know this isn't really what the Psalm is talking about, but think of this, the children of Israel, they get to Mount Sinai. God has led them through the wilderness. God has, you know, they've seen the 10 plagues and so on. They're sitting at the foot of Mount Sinai. God is there. Moses goes up and God is, uh, is is communing with Moses and sharing the commandments with Moses. And what do we find the children of Israel doing? Doing, they go they go to the gods of Egypt. They create themselves a golden calf and begin to worship it and uh, and commit to sin and adultery and idolatry. Even at the foot of the mountain where God is, they reject Him. And here we see. God provides her for their most basic needs. It says, for all this, they sinned still and believed not. Look at uh, verse 33 now. Therefore their, sin did he, uh, therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. We see the punishment for their sin, for their unbelief. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after God. Sometimes in our life, and, and, and I want to be careful with this. Sometimes in our life, we go th- in our lives, we go through difficulty. Uh, we go through some heartache. And, and, and sometimes that difficulty and heartache is a result of sin in our life. It's a result of unbelief in our life. And God uses the difficulty as a wake-up call. Uh, and, and as a wake-up call to bring us back to him. You look at verse 34, when he slew them, I would say that's a difficulty. That's a consequence. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and required early after God. Sometimes that difficulty, you know, the consequences of, of our, our poor choices, the, the, the consequences of our unbelief, difficulty comes in our life. And, and that should bring us back to the Lord. Now, look, verse 35. It says this, And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God, their Redeemer. They remembered who God was. It was short-lived, though. Look, verse 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. You think about uh, and then continue, I'm sorry, continue verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. How often are we like Israel? It says here that they they remembered God. They remember what he had done. They sought after him. But look at their heart. It says they flattered him with their mouth. They lied unto him with their tongues. And you look at verse 37, for their heart was not right with him. They weren't right with the Lord. It had become, it had become just lip service. They were in trouble. They were in difficult situations. And so with their mouth, they praised God with their mouth. They said, God, I need you. But in their heart, they weren't changed. And I wonder how many of us as Christians are as hypocritical as the Israelites were as we read here in Psalm 78, where our praise to the Lord is just lip service. Our attendance to the church or to church and to the Lord's house is just a show. Our praising God in the services and song is just a show. I, I pray that that's not our heart. I pray that our heart 
is right with the Lord, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see, we can fool everybody, but we're not fooling God. We can fool uh, the world. We can fool our church family. We can fool our spouse. We can fool our friends, but we're not fooling God. Is your heart right with him? I hope and pray it is. Look now, verse 38, just a couple more verses. I appreciate your patience this morning. But he, that being God, look at this now. But he being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did stir up all his wrath. Get this now, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. We serve such a loving God. God, in his compassion, forgave the Israelites of their iniquity. Uh, he turned from his anger. And then it says, you remember they were flesh. God knows exactly who we are. God knows exactly what we need. And God, oh, I'm so thankful. Our God is a compassionate God that forgives. I can't tell you how many times I have failed my God in this body. And I've sinned against him. But he is compassionate and forgiving. As Christians, we need to strive to be like the Lord our God and, and show that same compassion, that same forgiveness to, to those in our life and uh, to those that, that let us down and those that disappoint. And, and we're going to, uh, and uh, tonight in, in our adult Bible study, we're going to be looking at this idea of forgiveness a little more in depth and how it needs to be a part of our lives. We serve a compassionate, forgiving God. In turn, we must be, we must be compassionate and forgiving. Now, let's look at verse 39, almost done here. It says, For he remembered that they were but flesh, so when that passeth away and cometh not again. Now, verse 40, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? And man, they did. Man, they, they grieved the Lord. They provoked him. They, uh, they turned their back on him time and time again. It says, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, let's close verse 42, and then I want to go back to verse 41. It says, they remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Now, think about this in, back, in verse 41. It says, they turned their back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Just, just a thought here and we're done. Think with me. How many blessings have we forfeited because we've limited God? Think about that. How many answers to prayer have we limited because, or have we not received because we limited God? What a powerful statement here, a, a convicting thought uh, to think that we can limit God because of our sin, because of our unbelief, because of our a lack of serving him. We limit God's power in our life sometimes. We limit God's blessing in our life. The children of Israel, because they turned back and tempted God, they limited him. In the blessings that he wanted to give Israel, they limited him because Israel rejected God time and time again. And Christian, we do the same thing when we continue in our sin. We limit God. Now, don't get me wrong here. This doesn't impact our salvation. Uh, once we're saved, we're always saved. And there's nothing we can do to change that. 
But man, we limit God's blessing because of our rejection of him and our lack of belief. I, 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 I've told you the last three days, this is a powerful song. This is a convicting song. But this is an encouraging psalm. God has given this to us so that we can learn from the children of Israel how to live for God in a great way and experience the blessings of God. We serve a compassionate God. We serve a forgiving God. Let's live for him today. And then in turn, let's share that same compassion, that same uh, forgiveness with a world that so desperately needs it. Well, I'll leave you with that. I think we've gone a little longer than normal. Uh, but man, this psalm, I love it. It's so convicting and so encouraging at the same time. Hope that you uh, have enjoyed this walk through Psalm 78. I want to encourage you, uh, be back for services tonight uh, and uh, at six o'clock. Hope to see you then. Uh, and thank you so much for being on and watching the live stream. Uh, those of you who are watching later in the day, thank you so much for your faithfulness, faithfulness and watching. Those of you who are watching on YouTube as well, thank you so much for your faithfulness. And look forward to, to reading all of your comments later today. I don't know if anybody's commented. Uh, typically, there is a comment or two, but I'm not seeing it on my screen. So I apologize for that. But thank you so much for being on today. And look forward to seeing you tonight. Uh, and uh, I have with me today, uh, Noelle, she's with me. Let me see if I can, uh, Noelle, say hello to everybody. Hello. Hello. She's excited, a little embarrassed that uh, this is, uh, that uh, she is on, but that's okay. She's doing her schoolwork uh, and she wanted to come up with me today. Uh, and so there she is. Uh, but have a great day today. Hope to see you tonight. And uh, we'll definitely see you tomorrow for a power up, Lord willing. Uh, but I hope to see you tonight for services. Lord bless y'all.